Colorful tulips once again grace the Skagit Valley as spring kicks into gear, even if it is just for a day. <laughs> Remember, the uh, Tulip Festival is underway through the end of the month, and whether it looks like this or whether you got to put boots on and slog through the mud, still gorgeous out there, Mike. <laughs> I think it's going to be a boot slog tomorrow. <laughs> We're going to be tracking another round of rain that looks like it will be heavy up towards Mount Vernon there. We'll talk about that in a moment. I want to double back and tell you what Sebastian was just telling us and what Scott Shell was just reinforcing there is that we've got a recipe for avalanche danger. Now, the idea isn't to create hype here. This is only for folks who are considering going into the backcountry to take advantage of some of that new snow. Part of this recipe is an icy, firm base. Think about this for a while. We had a prolonged dry spell, so the snow that was up there got sun, it melted, it refroze, it even got some rain on it, so it's rock hard. You take new snow anywhere between one and five feet, like up towards Baker, where they did five feet of snow this week. You put that on top of it, and then you put some of that warming freezing levels got up to about 9,500 feet today, and that creates that wet, loose snowpack that gives way even in the tamest of caverns there. So just be very, very careful. Give it a couple days. Check with NWAC before you head out or just stay in the resorts. Speaking of freezing and snow levels, well, they're going to drop down to about 3,500 feet on Friday and then down as low as 300 and 500 on Sunday and Monday. Yeah, that's raising a lot of eyebrows. So the big question is, is will it snow at sea level on Sunday? Well, we'll have those low levels Sunday and Monday morning, but there's a couple things working against it. Warm ground temperatures, air temperatures that'll be right around the freezing mark, in fact, slightly above, and not a whole lot of precip to work with. So the answer is yes and no. I expect to see some flurries fly. I don't expect to see any measurable snow or any impacts in the lower elevations. That said, the mountains are gonna crank this weekend. Take a look at the big picture in the GO-17 satellite. This one doesn't look particularly impressive compared to what we've tracked recently, but it's a slow mover. So as it comes in overnight tonight, this is just after midnight, expecting some heavy rain, especially along the northwestern tip of of the Olympic Peninsula and then we go overnight tonight. This is three o'clock in the morning, so hopefully most of us are safe and warm in bed. Look at that though. We will see heavy rain up towards Mount Vernon and up towards Mount Baker. That snow level will finally drive down in the morning, but it looks like there could be some rain up there before it converts to snow. Now, as we get to 8 a.m. on Friday, we should be fine. Most of the I-5 corridor will be fairly quiet, but then we'll see some spotty showers and some convergence set up in the afternoon. This is right around 2.30, and it looks like it's gonna stay for a while and continue to push some snow up into Stevens and Snoqualmie Pass, and it looks like it's gonna do it through most of the weekend. If you're planning your weekend right now, it looks like Sunday will be better than Saturday. Saturday's got some spotty showers and possibly some thunderstorm potential. Sunday will be much mellower. The other part of the story too is some winds that'll gust up into the 20s and 30s as that frontal boundary passes by. And look at this, more snow on the way. 16 inches at Baker by the time we get to the weekend. And look at this, Snoqualmie gets up to about 30. Seven day forecast shows us touching down in a warm place overnight tonight. Looks like after that rain moves through, there is some thunderstorm potential after 11 a.m. And then it looks like we're gonna be having a cold, wet weekend, but we'll dry up on Monday and Tuesday.